So we've been talking about rhythm, right? Um, Monica said before service, she said, we've been talking about rhythm, but I feel like I don't have any more rhythm, literally rhythm. So sorry if you thought this message series was going to bring rhythm to your life. Um, musically, I apologize. Uh, no, so we've been talking about rhythm. First week we talked about what? We talked about God is your what? God is your constant, right? He's never changing. He's that metronome that is playing constantly, right? And the only thing that changes is when I reach over and I turn off God as my constant and do what I want to do. Week two, we talked about three goals, right? We talked about this year, Catalyst Youth. We want to learn how to study our Bible. We want to uh, find a mentor or a group of people we can process the Bible with. And then number three, we want to understand worship more and why we do it. And then we had a couple long-term goals that all turned out to be what? What we always say, long-term goals is knowing Christ, making Christ known, right? Um, and then last week, we talked about the Ten Commandments, right? And we talked about how no matter how good of a person I am, I can never be good enough in God's eyes because God's standard says that we all have fallen and fall short of God's standard, right? Everyone was still with me? So tonight, who likes to feel uncomfortable yeah. Who likes to feel uncomfortable? What? Not temperature-wise, just in general. Something that's not good. Um, well, I'm not talking about embarrassed. I'm talking about uncomfortable. And I have an example, okay? So everyone, I think, can think of a time when you felt uncomfortable. For me, it is the summer of 2022. Um, and I'm talking about COVID, right? I'm talking about this opera house downtown Rogers made me feel uncomfortable, okay? Um, just a little bit of information. You know, I used to do historical restoration, and what we got tasked to do was to literally lift this roof of the building up that was sagging somewhere between one foot and two foot um, from where it should be, right? And instead of using machinery, they decided, because it's historical, we have to lift it by hand. And so me and five of my closest friends, a.k.a. the worst employees I work with, decided we were going to do this summer 2020. Um, and we got in there, and here's a picture. We'll throw it up. Um, so you can see here, these are walk boards. Um, and we put them across. that They reach like 20 feet, and they're only about 12 inches wide. And that's what we'd walk across without any harnesses, just walking around, right? Um, and then the next photo you can see, a little bit better, but that is the roof that's literally falling in, and what we did is we went joist by joist, so every one of these pieces of wood we went, and we had to lift them up one by one, and we put reinforced beams and attached on every single one, um, and I did this every single day from 6 o'clock in the morning until 3 o'clock every single day. Um, talk about uncomfortable. It's hot. It's dirty. You can ask Allie. I would come home with black stuff all over me. I'm like coughing stuff up because we're in this old building. Uncomfortable. When I hear the word uncomfortable, this is what I think of. Because if I misstepped, I could have fell 20 feet, right? And I, you might be saying, Andrew, that's dramatic. Well, one of our bricklayers last year fell and was paralyzed for life, right? So, like, we're talking about uncomfortable. Did I feel good about it? Did I want to do this? No. We had some guys that showed up on the job site, and they said, I'm not doing this, right? Because they were uncomfortable. They didn't feel good. Words on the job site were like, uh, I don't know how this is going to go. Uh, this is pretty sketchy. Hey, hold on, we're going to jack this up, and then you're like, squeeze it. Oh, there it goes, right? Um, uncomfortable. No matter what it is, I think we can all think of a time, maybe not this extreme, where you feel uncomfortable. Maybe for you, it was just you got this new pair of shoes you really wanted, and then you wore them to school, and you felt really uncomfortable because they didn't look good. Or maybe it is you're not a public speaker, and so you had to do a public speak, and you felt uncomfortable, right? Has everyone ever felt uncomfortable? You with me? You thinking of something uncomfortable? Um, maybe it's... Talking to boys or girls makes you feel uncomfortable. I don't know what it is. Um, this topic makes you uncomfortable. Okay. So, I'd ask the question then, if we identified uncomfortable, how do you define comfortable, right? Um, everyone knows Allie, right? She's not here today. Um, Allie would define comfortable this way, especially with fall around the corner. Who likes fall? Yeah, everybody. Yeah, so Allie would define comfortable this way. A pumpkin spice latte with a nice sweater on, sitting outside in fall weather in a rocking chair doing nothing, right? Does that sound comfortable? Okay. Uh, 
for me, comfortable would be a nice fall day, coffee, walking in the woods, just looking at nature, literally thinking about nothing, right? That's comfort. When I think about that, or maybe you're somebody who likes to just lay in bed all day and do nothing. Is that comfortable? Yes. Okay. So definition of comfortable uh, doesn't say all those nice things, but it says it is enjoying physical comfort free from stress or tension. Who wants to be comfortable? I mean, wow, that sounds good. Matthew eleven twenty twenty eight 28 says this. Then Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary, and carry heaven burdens, and I will give you rest. I will give you comfort. Sounds good, huh? Next one. Psalms 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He lays me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Sounds peaceful, right? Sounds comfortable. Who wants to be comfortable? These great verses point us to the fact that um, comfort, receiving rest, is such a peaceful thing. But we learned last week what? That the verse doesn't stop here. So he identifies, come to me all who are weary, and I will give you rest. But it didn't stop there, remember? It said, what next? It said, take my yoke. And I was like, what? I just came to get rest, God. Now you're asking me to do some more work? Right? So then the question that came to me was, am I looking for comfortable or am I looking for easy? Am I looking to be comfortable or am I looking for something that's easy? Um, I don't know about you, but the truth is I'm looking to be comfortable and it better be easy, right? Because by my definition, comfort in my brain is easy. It meant that I wasn't going to do anything. I was just going to sit around, drink coffee. That's what I define comfortable. My question tonight is, how does God define comfort? Hmm. Let's pick up in verse 4. So 23 of Psalm, verse 1 through 3 said, He's my shepherd. He's going to give me rest. He's going to lead me the paths of righteousness. Doesn't that sound good? Who wants to be on some good paths tonight, right? On the right path. Um, then it says in verse 4, after it says all these nice things, it says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley. What? Jesus, you told me I'm going to be walking on paths of righteousness in verse 3. In verse 4, you say, when you're in the shadow of death. You're like, what? What kind of path of righteousness is this, God? And then it says, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and my staff protect and comfort me. So what is it, God? Am I going to be on paths of righteousness, or am I going to be in valleys of death? Unfortunately, sometimes both. So what's God's definition of comfort? If we look at the, comf if we look at the definition from Psalm 23... There's something that ties all of this together. Verse 1, 2, and 3, he says, He leads me. He's beside me. And verse 4, it says, You are close beside me. Who's the comfort? Is it your circumstances? Is it where you're at? Or is it God being with you? Is God where your comfort comes from? Don't believe me? Let's look at the next verse. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 says, Come to me all. Where are we going? Going to Jesus. Who are weary and heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke, to easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Why? Because Jesus is there with you. We talked about it last, night, last week, right? If you're yoked to Jesus, he's there to bear the burdens with you. Where's the comfort? being easy, not having things to do, or is the comfort coming from God? Joshua 1, verse 9. Everyone loves this one, um, but I like reading things before the spiritual verse 9. Um, and so we're going to pick up in verse 6, okay? What I like between verses 6 and 9, when you go 6, 7, 8, 9, is he says, be strong and courageous three times. But he says it for three different reasons. You guys still with me? Is God the comfort, right? Okay. Joshua verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to your ancestors I give you. Why should be strong and courageous? Verse 6 tells us, Because God promised you something. That's what you're standing on. That's what you're being courageous in. The next verse 7 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all my instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, either turning to the left or the right, 
Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in it. Verse 7 and 8, what is he talking about? Be strong and courageous. Why? Because you're meditating on the Word of God, right? You're not strong and courageous because you're Brandon, right? You're strong and courageous because you're meditating on the Word of God. Then lastly, this is what we're talking about. Who's my comfort? Where does my comfort come from? Verse 9 says, This is my commandment. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Why can I be strong and courageous? Why can I have comfort everywhere I go? Because God is with me. God is the key in the comfort. Comfort is not my circumstances. It's not about things that are easy, right? God is the comfort. God is the key to comfort. Yet so often, we're... Uh, we seek to be comfortable by my standards, right? Andrew's standards. I want to do the easy things. Um, so looking back to week one, we talked about the metronome. How many times in life God asked me to do something, that metronome in my life, and instead of doing what God wants me to do, I turn the metronome off and I stop listening to God because that's too hard, right? I feel uncomfortable, right? Um, it's a nitpicky thing of mine, but I hate when people use the words, I feel, right? Um, when people say, oh, service felt better today, or um, I felt like serving God today. I'm always like, we move by our feelings. If I feel a certain way, does that move me, right? Hmm. Because I want to be comfortable by my standards. Okay? How about this one? Or is it just me? We rely on our natural gifting and ability and so often call it God, right? We talked about it last week. We were talking about self-righteousness. How often do I rely on Andrew, who I would say, I feel very comfortable on the stage talking to you guys. I don't feel uncomfortable, right? And so I could just go on my own ability and come up with a sermon to tell you guys on my own, not ask God about it at all, and then be like, that's what God had to say to you guys tonight right? That would be me relying on my own ability, right? So often we rely on me and we use God as a backup plan when things don't go right, right? So often we rely on that. God will ask me to walk through hard things. God will ask you to do things that are hard, but he's right there beside you. And how often do we say, God, I don't want to do that. That's too hard. I'm uncomfortable, Rhythm, right? Are you in rhythm with God constantly? Is God your constant? Is that who you're seeking after? Um, so back to Daniel. Everyone remember the story of Daniel we did week one? We talked about Daniel, about how he wasn't going to bow down to the king, demanding him to do all these things. It was really good for him in chapters one. But then he gets to chapter six, which is the most well-known story, uh, which is lion, uh, Daniel in the lion's den, right? Everyone know that one? Everyone stay with me? Um, so the king says, only worship me. And then it's a trap that's set for Daniel, and there's this law that's made um, that says, only worship me. Daniel hears the law, goes and worships God anyway, um, and then he's thrown into the lion's den. That's what I want to pick up. Verse 22, it says, My God set the angels to shut the lion's mouth so they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight, and I have not wronged you, your majesty. He has sent the angels to shut the mouth of the lions. Anyone, anyone ever thought about that line before? I didn't. I'll give credit where it's due. Everyone know Margo? So Margo said this to me, and I was like, Margo, you're so smart. Um, and it really related and clicked with me. So she um, asked the question of, why did God do it this way? Why did he just shut the mouth of the lions? My question for you is, was Daniel comfortable in the lion's den? Hmm. By my standard, right, was it easy? Was he sitting there with coffee, drinking on a cold day, thinking about nothing? That's my definition of comfort. Was, but was Daniel comfortable? I would say he would be, right? And you're all looking at me like, how can Daniel be comfortable? That's exactly what I'm talking about tonight. By God's definition of what comfort is, God was with him in the lion's den. So by God's definition, Daniel would have been comfortable, right? If Daniel didn't have a relationship with God, if he wasn't in rhythm with him, he would for sure have not been comfortable, Right? But because we saw all the way from chapter 1 to chapter 6 that he was in constant rhythm with God, 
he was comfortable because he knew God had him there for a reason. God had asked him to do this, to not worship anyone before me, right? He was comfortable because God was with him, not because of where he was at, not because it was easy, not because of his situation. He was comfortable because of who was with him. But why did God just shut the mouth of the lions? This is what Margo brought out to me. Why didn't he just stop Daniel from being thrown into the lion's den? God can do whatever he wants, right? Why didn't, why didn't God just create Daniel to be super strong and jacked to just beat the lions up when he got in there, right? Wouldn't that made Daniel feel more comfortable? Maybe Daniel wouldn't have been thrown in there, right? But no, it says that he just shut the mouth of the lion. Does that mean that the lion was sleeping? Does that mean that the lion, like, curled up and slept with him like we see in the Bible stories? I don't know right? I would like to conclude that shut the mouth of the lion means that the lion was still in there, right? He could still see the lion. Not behind the cage like at the zoo. The lion's right there. But he was comfortable because God was with him. So are you comfortable tonight? Are you still looking for easy? Right? (laughs) Do you see that if you have a relationship with God, Comfort isn't based on where you're at, what you're doing. It's based on your relationship with God. So if you're in relationship with God, no matter what your day looks like, no matter what you're going through, when I say, I feel like I'm not enough, God says, you move by feelings again, Andrew? I thought we got over that. When I say, man, I'm tired. I don't, I don't want to go do this, God. Why is this person at the grocery store talking to me about their hard day? Right? It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't want to talk to you. And God says, did I ask you to do something easy? Or did I ask you to be comfortable where I have you because I'm with you? Right? If you're not with God, if you don't know where you stand with God, I would beg to differ. You're probably going to feel uncomfortable a lot with questions like, where do you go when you die? Right? If you're not with God, you feel uncomfortable. If we're with God, it says that we have comfort knowing that we will be with him. And so you might be saying, Andrew, this sounds really easy in theory. Well, cool fact, my friends. Um, I promise you that if you're in rhythm with God and you're seeking him continually, when hard things come, which they will, which they will, you will be blown away that in the natural, I'm not enough, right? But with God, I'm comfortable. And that's not me just saying that because I've read the Bible. That's me saying when we lost our son, Was I comfortable by my standard? No. But by God's standard, was I comfortable? Yes. I had peace that passed all understanding, right? Honestly, I'm not not here to, to puff God up. God doesn't need me to puff him up. I'm just here to share the truth, right? I was in rhythm with God. I was seeking God. And I can honestly say that in the natural, I should have been uncomfortable, but I was comfortable because God was with me right? And so when people ask me the same question that she asked me tonight, why did God put Daniel in the lion's den? Same question, why did my son pass away? And I always say, I don't know the why, but I knew the who, and that's what moves me on. That's what makes me feel comfortable, is because I know without a shadow of a doubt that God exists, right? And so I'm comforted by being with him, right? Even though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, even though when hard things come, I feel comfortable because God is with me. I ask again, do you feel comfortable? Are you just looking for easy? I have a couple other things to share, but I'm going to end there because we're going to move into small groups. Before I do that, I'm just going to pray for us. Let's go to God. Father, we just thank you so much. Um, that you help us to feel comfortable, not by my feelings, not by what I see around me, God, but because I know you're with me. I ask that tonight that in these small groups, God, we can dig in a little bit deeper to be able to discuss this topic. God, we thank you that you're always there for us. You're our constant, no matter what. You never leave us, you never forsake us. We love you in Jesus' name, amen.